where I help you make better coffee and give you honest reviews. Today, we are taking a look at two entry-level machines. These are machines that I have been recommending now. Uh, this one in particular I've been recommending for a long time, probably almost two years. Um, over here on the left, though, this is a newcomer. It's only been out for about a month or so. And um, it is sold uh, by Joe over at the Espresso Outlet as the Turin Legato. Obviously, this comes in a couple of different forms, as you may know, but this is the version uh, I am reviewing and supporting. Um, and over here, we have the Bambino. Uh, this, uh, again, has been a machine that I've been reviewing for a while. It retails here at about $2.99 in the United States. And if you get the Pro model or the Plus or whatever heck the heck it's called, uh, you'll get the uh, $3.99 price. Uh, so they're both pretty good. The only, Really, the only difference is the Steam one is more of like an automatic frothing sy system. Um, but uh, I think on the newer ones now, though, that doesn't have this issue, some of the older models of this, if you got the Plus, you didn't get the ability to do water. Um, that was why I did this one. Also, the price, $100 less for non-automatic steaming is totally fine. Uh, I'm going to turn both these machines on uh, just to show you kind of the startup. So um, the nice thing with the, with the Breville is that it does heat up remarkably quick. As you can see, it's already saying that it's ready to brew. Now, keep in mind that if you're brewing espresso, you probably want the brew chamber to be hot. Now, they give you this really cheap Fisher Price-esque uh, portafilter. This um, is not great. I, I don't recommend anybody use this. If you buy this machine, sell this immediately get a bottomless or buy a higher end version of the 54 millimeter uh, portafilter because this is made of like really cheap aluminum and uh, there's a plastic insert. So there's a lot of like no goes for me on, on that. Along with the tamper, definitely buy the tamper for this. And I, just a recommendation, and I'll leave the links to all this stuff uh, below. And then the other recommendation for this is the uh, dosing funnel. Um, it definitely is, makes it a little bit easier to take your coffee grounds and put them in there, uh, no matter what you're using, whether you're using a grinder or a or a port filter grinder or whatever. It's nice to have one of these. It makes a lot less mess. Um, but so in terms of the heating, though, you definitely want to do this when you get this. You want to let some water run through this. So I'm going to hit that button and let it brew some water just to heat up the um, porta filter a little bit. It's just a good idea to do that. Now you can see this is a little bit warmer. On this one though, you don't have to do that. Actually, I don't know where the porta filter, oh, it's right over here. Sorry, live stream folks. This is a uh, name of the game. Also, as this is a live stream, if you have questions for me as we're going, definitely put them in the comments. If you haven't already, like the video, subscribe to my channel, it helps me out a lot. We blazed by 5,000 not that long ago and now we're shooting for six. So help us get there. Mr. Rainbow Loves Coffee says hello and that they push the button every time when they make a, coffee, when they make a cup of coffee and after. Oh, oh yes, oh you, um, uh, Mr. Coffee said, if you can't hear my wife speaking, she said, uh, Mr. Coffee said that he hits the button every time uh, that he makes it. And yes, you if you have the Bambino, you definitely want to do that. Other machines, you, just to clean off the bottom, sometimes you want to do that. Like there is a shower screen down here. You, you want to kind of clean that off by just hitting the button for a second. This is the manual button. And then just kind of letting it go. And if you have a, a little like towel or something, you could rinse it off. We're starting with a very clean machine though, so you don't have to worry about that. So let's talk about um, some of the things that I like about one machine and I don't like about the other. First off is the fact that this machine has a um, very um, quick turnoff period. I think you could only keep this on for maybe 30 minutes and then it'll turn off. So the top of this never seems to get very hot. Um, so if you do put some cups up here, it's nice that there's a, a heating tray, but um, it's almost useless because 
the top of this machine is really barely warm, I would say, especially considering it's using a thermo block heating system. Uh, whereas this over here actually uses two. I can already feel a little heat uh, like right here. Um, but this uses a boiler and then it also uses a thermo block for the steam wand. Um, so that's kind of a cool concept. Not many machines do that. Uh, the only other machine that I know of offhand is the Quick Mill Solvano, which I did review. You could look up that review. That was a really nice machine. Obviously the Quick Mill Solvano is a nicer machine than this one. Um, but again, that retails over thousand dollars. This on the other hand is $4.99. And that's the other thing I'll talk about here is the price points. I like the price points about both of them. Obviously this one is worse, it's $4.99. This one is $2.99. So you are jumping up $200. But the things you're getting with that is, like I said, you're getting a full boiler on here, which is very nice. Um, it has a lot more you know, thermo capabilities. Uh, it has a PID. So uh, you can set the temperature here. Right now I have it set to 95 Celsius but using these plus and minus buttons, you can easily change that. And then, um, you know, you're getting a much sturdier build quality. You get the full size 58 millimeter portafilter versus the 54, like I was mentioning before, just take a look at how small that is. Um, so if you want, you know, more full extraction, more traditional espresso, that's gonna come out of this one. And obviously too, the nice thing with getting this machine is you don't have to buy a, a tamper, you don't have to buy a new port filter. Everything that comes with this is at least usable. The port filter is actually very nice. It's a it's a full stainless steel chromed chromed out um, one, and the handle's okay. It's a plastic knob, but that's totally fine. Um, and then you know everything else is you know pretty pretty sturdily built. Uh, there's nice touch points here, so this this is like turns to turn on your steam one. There is some little funky things here, like obviously this is not a true uh, like knob where it would release more or less pressure. There's not a control like that. It's basically just a button. So like you'll hear it click and that just means it's on or off. It's not gonna let you control the pressure. Um, but the Bambino is the same way. <laughs> so you can hit the steam button here and then it'll start heating up for that. And then um, there's a, a hot water button here and that'll let you shoot hot water out. There you go. The hot water obviously comes out much faster because it's already set to that temperature. One downside with this machine is there is no hot water tap. So if you wanted the hot water, you would uh, have to like basically use the water that comes out of this, which I don't recommend. You could technically use the the brew chamber water. The reason I don't recommend that um, is that you're gonna get kind of like coffee-ish tasting water. So if you're doing tea or something like that, not a great idea. Um, also, uh, you could, the other option is, and this is what I did on the Silvano actually, cause it didn't have a hot water tap. Uh, you could put some hot water in a cup and steam it. And that kind of gets you the same idea. Um, what else do we have to say about these machines? There's, there's kind of a lot um, different. Obviously, they're both entry levels. Uh, another thing, though, I could think of is that the, uh, th there is a brew pressure here. Um, so that's nice. You could actually see what you're uh, true, truly brewing at. Um, so th it's nice to see there. And there is actually a way to change the flow. I know there's a lot of people that got upset at me. I said pressure, but no, this is a flow controller down here. You can put a, like a little screw in here and turn this hard to see, but it's possible to do it. That'll just lower or increase the flow, which in turn increases your pressure, you know, however you want to do it. Now, obviously it's, it probably is going to time out at a certain pressure. It's not going to go, I think it stops at like 12, but, um, yeah, it doesn't have an adjustable over pressure valve. Mr. Coffee says that they use a puck screen too, and for their Breville, they love Normcore tools. Normcore, uh, yeah, uh, Mr. Mr. Coffee, is yeah. that yes, Mr. Coffee uh, mentioned that Norm Normcore Normcore <laughs> uh, tools are really great. I love Normcore too. I think 
uh, not this one, but I think this is a norm core. Uh, I have a norm core um, uh, distributor tamper uh, for my base setup. It is in my uh, links in the description. Um, I'll put those after the video airs, uh, but you can check out there down down in the description. But yeah, I love norm core stuff. Um, I also love puck screens. The puck screens are amazing. If you haven't used a puck screen, use them. I'm not going to do it for this review because I, I want you to see the differences uh, in the distribution of the water. But uh, the puck screens are awesome because like when you knock out a puck, it just comes out so much cleaner. Um, what else do we have here? I'm trying to think. Uh, both of them are, they're, they're honestly kind of similar machines, even though um, this has more of a, you know, commercial-y vibe to it. Um, the internals aren't super commercial. They, they're, I would say, more, they're, they seem higher quality than Breville. So if you're looking for something that's going to last longer, I think this probably will last longer. Um, there's, it just feels a little bit sturdier. Uh, most of, there's a lot of plastic involved on the Breville. Like all these, these are metal pieces on here, but they're super sh like thin, like sheet metal. So it looks nice but everything inside here is plastic. And actually the top, I'm not convinced this is metal. If it is, it's like a very thin layer. Anyways, as you can see here too, or you can't see, but I can tell you, this is cold, this is hot. And actually, I will get you my handy dandy laser to just show you the difference. So this hasn't been on that long, and this is at 80, what does that say, 80? 88, yeah. 86. Yeah, it just depends on where I'm at here. So 86, this is at, this is probably like, what, 60? 68. Yeah, so it's a pretty, degree difference. yeah, this, this is like hot to my hand. So if you had a cup here heating up, like give it about 10 minutes, that'll be a hot cup. So something to consider if you like a warm cup, if, you know, this is, this is closer to, I would say a Gaggia Classic Pro or something like that. Obviously, some of the stuff is different, you know, the overpressure valves and all that jazz. But you do get a true PID. Both of these have a true PID. This is adjustable. This one is kind of adjustable. I think there's a way to do it. You have to go like hold both buttons and, and change some stuff, but you're not getting a true readout of the temperature. This gives you a true readout and you get to see it afterward too. So like after you brew, since this is a boiler, the temperature will drop and it's got to go back up, but you can see and, and know when to do that. Whereas like the Gaggia Classic Pro, for example, if that's a machine you're looking at, you have no idea. You just have to kind of go off the thermostat. Um, so anyways, I, uh, I think that kind of does it for like the big, the big differences. They both do have, um, manual brewing options, uh, and sort of pre-infusions. This one does a pre-infusion by low pressure constantly. This does it by doing a small spritz of water on top and then you can stop it and you could set the time on that one, which is nice. You can make this a little bit longer on this one. Um, both of them have their advantages. This is what I would call like a, a pre-blooming where you like hit the coffee with water, let it bloom, and then it starts pushing. This is more like a, a very slow buildup of pressure and then it ramps it up really fast. Uh, I actually kind of like the pre-infusion version of that more. That's how I normally brew my espressos. I go like two bars for a little while, constant, constant two bar pressure, and then ramp it up. Anyways, um, one more. Mr. Rainbow for your $10 contribution. Oh, that was very nice. Uh, as Mr. Rainbow, thank you very, very much for uh, the generous super chat. If anybody else wants to super chat, obviously we we would greatly appreciate them. Um, but I appreciate that. What is what is uh, is there any comments in there? Uh, thank you for your help with these espresso machines. And yeah. then we have a message from Steve um, saying, "How are you still liking the TKO2?" The TKO2, you can give it a quick look over there. Camera wife, camera wife K. There is the TKO2. I will be doing my settings video. Actually, I'm going to record that directly after this, but it won't be live. I'm going to record that. And then I'm going to do a comparison video of that in the Magnifica Evo. And then I'll probably switch to something else. We're always reviewing espresso machines here. We always constantly have stuff. 
on our countertop, uh, even though it can be frustrating <laughs> at times having so many espresso machines on our countertops. But it is fun for us and we enjoy doing it. But how are you liking the TKO2? I'm loving the TKO2. I still, I still use it occasionally. Again, I have a really nice, uh, you know, setup uh, with with my uh, DF64 and and you know my my manual espresso machine, the Lolite Bianca. But if I'm looking for a quick little fix and I just want to make a quick decaf, it, it heats up a little bit faster if I just need to do something quick. And then uh, if I have friends over and they want to like play around with a super automatic and be able to make their own drinks, um, that one's cool because the interface is super easy. Steve says they don't wake up the baby. Oh no, they do wake up the baby. All of the espresso machines, I would say, don't wake up the baby, but the TKO2 in particular... When it shuts off. Yeah, it does have a very loud shutoff cycle. I'd like to compare it maybe to some other machines, um, we but... We probably do a decibel reading. Yeah, we do a decibel reading, but the thing is, is none of, none of my other machines... I've actually never seen a machine, I don't think, do a steam shutdown. There might have been another one that we tested. I can't remember, but... This one in particular is is uh, astonishingly uh, wow. loud. It does like, and, and maybe it's just because we don't expect it. Because the other machines, the yeah, shutoff the time, shut time, that, yeah, you can customize the shutoff time on that, and it's set for like eight hours or something like that, which is really cool. You could just like come up to the machine at any time, and just hit a button, and it's ready to go. But, and that's why I like my Elite and some of these more traditional espresso machines versus this one, which we'll probably be turning off before we're even ready to make a shot. Anyways, <laughs> before we do that though, let's actually make a shot. So I will do, Ooh, this is backwards. Oop, aw, that's a bummer. We're gonna have to clean that up later. <laughs> Good morning, Dylan. Dylan, thank you for joining us. Oh, Dylan, hey, it's been a minute since uh, I've had Dylan on. We used to do chats and stuff back in the day. It's been a, been a while since we've done that. The old COVID days. Yeah, he said he can't remember the last time he went live. Yeah, it's been a, it's been a while. Um, anyways, uh, so let me go ahead and make this. This is going to be the Bambino. This was a wild guess in the dark. Um, this one should be pretty dialed in uh, with my... I have some uh, Equator coffee... Um, I think it's the Eye of the Tiger, so espresso. Um, so this one should be pretty dialed in. This was a real guess. Because it's a 54 millimeter port filter, folks, um, it's not what I'm using on the daily, so it's a little bit harder for me to do these videos because I have to, you know, basically guess to try to get the right amount in. But I think, I think, I, I think I'll get pretty close. We'll see. Or I'll just totally choke out the machine. Huh? A live stream or, or together, or is he saying making this shot of espresso? I don't know. This is a great tamp. Nice tamp. Like it. So this is 14 grams of espresso. I probably could have done 16. I'll let you put that in there. And you could feel some things like this, like creaks a little bit more than the other machines. But let me go ahead and. It turned off. Remember what I was saying? It turns off way too fast. This is still not even close to hot, and it's off. It's gonna come back on very fast, I'm sure. Yeah, it's already back on, but it's very frustrating. Uh, that's that's probably my biggest complaint about this machine is how fast it shuts off. Yeah, Dylan says if you like to do a live stream with you. Yeah, that'd be awesome, Dylan. Yeah, we'd love to do a live stream. Maybe we'll do one on Instagram or whatever. Actually, we could do those on YouTube now. So maybe we could do that. That'd be cool. All right. So I'm gonna I'm gonna see what we get here. I'm gonna set this to um, do a. Oh, that's weird. As I press down on this, maybe I need to move this. Okay. So I'm gonna do a manual shot. So all you do is tap and hold, and it'll start to do a pre-infusion. And I'm just gonna hold it until it starts going. It's a little fast, folks. It's a little fast. 
way too fast. I should have done 16 grams. That's the other thing too. Is it does this does it might have an over like a a three way solenoid valve. I don't think it does though. I'm pretty sure this machine doesn't have that. So you do get soggy shots a lot. Um, this was a bad shot. I'm not gonna lie. We'll still taste it, but I got 50 grams in like 22 seconds or something like that. Yeah, look at that. Look at that sopping mess. That's a sopping shot. Let's switch over here. Yeah, that was about a nine minute shut off on that breville. Nine minute shut off on the breville. Yeah, and, and I don't know of a way to change it. That's the other thing too, is I there should be a way, but I don't know of one. Mr. Rainbow said, yeah, those breville espresso machines do that all the time with the water staying in the port filter. Yeah, I mean, you know, the uh, some of them do a better job. Like uh, I when I had my what was it? The uh, Breville Barista Express, which was a good machine for a while. It was like our first foray into this whole world. Actually, I should say the Special Lita was, but um, the uh, it did a pretty good job. Oh, where where's my other tamper? Oh, I'll give you the 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 stock tamper. You can see this is the stock tamper that comes with it. It's actually not half bad. It's it's heavy. It's got some weight to it metal on the bottom looks like stainless the plat it's got a plastic top but you know whatever it's it's usable what you get in a gaja classic pro i would i would beg to say is not even usable like if you want to get any like real tamping action on one on that it is it's garbage just give that again so cool making three gallons of drip wow it's a lot of drip coffee you still uh, still going hard in the paint on lifting, Dylan? I know uh, Dylan likes, he used to like bodybuilding stuff. I'm not sure if he still does that. Um, anyways, let's, uh, let's see what we get with this one. I think this is going to be a significantly better shot. Um, let's tar this in. And I'll make sure I put the timer on this time. I did this after first drip too, so it's probably like the first 10 seconds. This is gonna be a good shot, I think. And we're sitting here, it looks like 10 bars, 12, 11 bars almost. Well, it went a little bit long. Uh, so we had about 22 seconds, 42 grams. I wanted to stop it at 20, we were at 38, which was, was 16 grams in. So this is actually probably a pretty good shot. And for an espresso, this is, and this is one downside with this. It's a little bit shallow, kind of like the Gaggia. Good morning, Sayla. Sayla has joined us on this wonderful Saturday morning. Dylan made that for a, a bridal shower, and yes, he's still lifting every day. Oh, that's a well, bridal shower. Very cool. All right, so we have, uh, here's your shot comparison. Now, I'm not going to judge these shots uh, this, I just didn't dial this in. This one's relatively dialed in. As you can see, we get a nice crema there and everything. But this is perfectly capable. The, the Breville's perfectly capable of making good espresso shots. Anyways. What's the use case for these? Let's dive in. One second. It's not great. <laughs> it's bitter and almost sour. I don't know how that's possible. Dylan's training for a show. Dylan says he's training for a, a competition show. That's pretty cool. You getting extra ripped, probably? You gonna like fast for like three days? Spit out your extra spit, water. <laughs> spit into a can. I know the bodybuilders do, or some of the, at least the wrestlers do that to make weight. This is much better. Again, this was just dialed in. So I just wanted to show like making a shot, really. It's nothing crazy. Um, but yeah, uh, the use cases for both these machines, is somebody asking that? Oh, yeah. Oh, Kaylin wants to know <laughs> which, uh, the use case for these machines. 
This one's smaller, as you can see, it's probably about half the footprint. So if you have a small kitchen or very small space, maybe even a, an office, if you're in an office and maybe you get a manual grinder or something like that, you could use this pretty easily. Um, this would definitely fit. This, you might look like a lunatic if you had this in your cubicle. Um, if you have a very large office, maybe. <laughs> but this is a, this is a, it's a nice setup. This would be closer to something for a nicer kitchen, a bigger kitchen. Um, and you know, they can kind of, there's some cross between the two, obviously. They're both in the same price category. They're both entry level. So if you're just trying to get into espresso and you want something that doesn't have a built-in grinder, or you just want to get something that that'll get you started. I think both these machines are really great. I don't have a problem with either of them. If you if I walked into a kitchen and I saw either one of these machines, I would be ecstatic to play around with it, you know? So, um, I don't think there's anything wrong with either of them. Just whatever you're whatever you're vibing with. If you want something that's more this thing's so hot now. I want to see what it is now. 100 degrees. 98 degrees. Yeah, that thing's hot. So like that that's what I'm saying. Like this you're you're paying an extra $200, you're getting heating, you're getting a bigger porta filter, you don't have to buy accessories. So, you know, there it's a better machine. There's no way around it. Zeke has a question, but I feel like I'm going to slaughter the question. We have a question from Zeke, is that what I'm hearing? Zeke FPV, is there a Bambino Arduino project like the Gaggiano. Oh, um, I've heard of this. I don't know enough about that. If you want to elaborate, Zeke, um, about what those projects are, that'd be cool. I'm just not super familiar with them. Um, I think it's like an upgrade to the Bambino and an upgrade to the, Gag the Gaggia Classic Pro. Um, but anyways, that said, both machines are cool. Um, it's really, you know, just what, what you want, uh, if you can afford it, you know, either one of these, I would say pair it with a DF64. I think that's a great grinder to pair either of these machines with. Um, and if you need to go even more budget, maybe you go with this because it's a nice espresso machine, but you go with a lower end grinder, you maybe get a uh, Breville Smart Grinder Pro. It's 200 bucks and it can definitely make espresso. It's not going to do the best, but it'll get you started. Any other uh, questions before we close out today? Not that I'm seeing. Cool. Can you say Bambino Arduino project six times fast? I cannot say Bambino Arduino, Ard, Arduino project six times fast. Just I'm, <laughs> I'm sure I couldn't Bambino. I can barely say Arduino. I'm not even sure I'm saying that right. I'm sure I'm saying it wrong, actually. <laughs> Will you be coming out with your own line of beans? I did that a little while back, and it was uh, very, it was more difficult to do than I was expecting. I had to, like, go through some UPC stuff and all that jazz. I would like to maybe just p partner with a local roaster around here. I have an idea to do that, um, just to kind of get something out there. My, rip, my, my desire, though, is to sell on Amazon because I know it's a lot easier for people to just buy on Amazon, um, but it is very hard to get your product on Amazon, especially if it's a food-based product. So it's a little bit more difficult. Um, I think it's something I'd, I would like to do. Um, I've also thought about doing a coffee trailer. Um, I know that uh, our, our buddy Dylan has maybe done the coffee trailer. I remember seeing him working on it, but... Not sure what that ever happened. Looks like we got another comment. Oh, it was just, uh, it's Steve saying it's Arduino. 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 I Which made... is easier, but the dyslexia definitely messes with my brain on that word. Yeah. It's a, it's a weird one. Um, but yeah, so those are my couple of projects that, you know... I would like to do, not sure if it would happen, but it'd be cool to try. Um, but yeah. Stressing out the camera wife. Yeah, camera wife doesn't like the stress. <laughs> <laughs>
Yeah. I've had the trailer up and running for a year now. Oh, cool. So Dylan's had the trailer up and running for a year. And the cart for almost three. The cart for three. The cart, the cart was cute. Yeah, I, I do remember the cart. I would like to pick the your cart brain. The was more than cute. It was legit. Yeah, it was legit. Yeah, it's a legit cart. But, um, yeah, we'd be cool to uh, chat about that maybe. Dylan, we do a live stream talking about... A year in the making. Yeah, the uh, the trailer in the making, how, how that goes. Honestly, my biggest concern with the trailer is just, like, can I park it in these places? How hard is it to get approval? Should I just go and ask for forgiveness later? That's how I like to roll the most, of, most of my life. <laughs> Do it and hope nobody notices. He'd love to chat with you about it. Sounds good. Well, on that beautiful note, I hope everyone has a great day. It's Saturday. Live it up. Give me a thumbs up, subscribe, and I will see you in the next video. See ya.